All right, number two, we're asked to write A inverse as a product of elementary matrices. Remember, elementary matrices are going to be permutations or uh, slight alterations of the identity matrix so that when you multiply a matrix, when you pre-multiply a matrix by them, so multiply the elementary matrix on the left, it's going to do the same row operation uh, we would do on the matrix. So the first step in doing this is we, re we record all the row operations we did to take A and put it into reduced row echelon form, which in this case was the identity. And the way you get the elementary matrix associated with a row operation is you write down the elementary or the identity matrix you're working with. In this case, it's the 3 by 3 identity matrix, and you just do that row operation on that matrix. So uh, for the first one, E1, we switch row 1 and row 2 of the identity matrix. For the second elementary matrix, I'm going to replace the third row with negative 2 times the first row plus the third row. The third one, I'm just going to switch row 2 and row 3. Now I've got to replace row 3 with row 2 plus row 3. Multiply row 3 by 2. Replace row 1 with row 3 plus row 1. Oops, I've lost track. This was E4. This one's E5. This is E6. And then finally E7. Replace row 1 with negative 3 row 2 plus row 1. Those are our elementary matrices. So, if we think about what we did, is we started with the matrix A, and then we did the first row operation to A. Then we did the second row operation to this matrix. And then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And what did this work out to be? The identity. So, A inverse then has to be the product of these elementary matrices. Why? Because there is only one inverse. Inverses are unique. Prove that in class. And so A inverse is equal to this product of elementary matrices in this order, and here are the elementary matrices. Now when you factor a matrix like this, the product is not often unique. In fact, it's not unique at all. I could have put in a couple other row operations. For example, just on a whim, I could have switched R1 and R3 at one point and then switched them back right afterwards. Okay, that would have included a couple extra um, elementary matrices. So it's not like when you factor numbers, you're going to get some kind of uniqueness out of this. Um, but you can factor it. Now for the uh, tenacious reader or viewer, it's a good exercise to multiply these matrices in these orders and actually see that you come up with an inverse. And what's even a, a more interesting exercise is to look back at your work from number one, all right, um, and observe the right-hand side of that super augmented matrix we started with. So as you go through, you start with E1. You want to look at the first, um, after the first step, what the identity turned into, then E2 times E1. E3, and you'll notice that as you multiply these guys through, each step you do that, the identity matrix is going to reflect that new product. Okay, so it's a good exercise to multiply these out in this order uh, from E1 up to E7. So let's multiply them that way, um, and then see how that corresponds to what you did on the right hand side. So that'll do it then for number two. Okay, finally, number three, we're asked to write A as a product of elementary matrices. So here's all the work we did to write A inverse as a product of elementary matrices, and A inverse is equal to that. 
As we mentioned in class, each elementary matrix is invertible because each of those row operations we're allowed to do is undoable. Um, so how do I get A then back? Well, what's A going to be? Well, A is equal to the inverse of the inverse. And so it's, I'm going to be taking the inverse of this product. How do I take the inverse of a product? I take the product of the inverses in the reverse order. So really all I have to do to figure out A is figure out what the inverses of all these things are. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up into each of these and find their inverses. So I'm just going to use the magic of, uh, of, of the video player here to help me out. So E1 inverse. What I'd have to do the, uh, the inverse of switching row 1 and row 2. So if I switch row 1 and row 2, how do I get back to the original matrix? I switch them again. So E1 inverse... I'm going to, I'll put this little inverse there. E1 inverse is actually the same matrix as E1. Oh, what about E2 inverse? I've replaced row 3 with negative 2 row 1 plus row 3. So how do I get back to my original row 3? Well, I add 2 row 1s back to it. So that's the inverse there. How do I switch row two? And, how do I switch back row two and row three? I, I switch them again. Okay, so we talked about that one already. I'm replacing row two, or excuse me, I'm replacing row three with row two plus row three. So how do I undo that? I replace row three with negative row two plus row three. I've got a stray mark here. Um, how do I undo multiplying row three by a half? Multiply row 3 by 2. I replaced row th 1 with row 3 plus row 1. How do I undo that? Replace row 1 with negative row 3 plus row 1. And finally, i got to undo replacing row 1 with negative 3 row 2 plus row 1. Make that positive 3. So, Inverting an elementary matrix really amounts to just thinking through what the opposite row operation would be to get you back uh, to the original matrix. And so, once again, um, it's a good exercise to start with these, multiply them all the way back out, and see that you get our uh, matrix A. That'll do it for number three, and that'll do it for quiz four.